Well, it's no secret now. Drones are becoming more and more a part of the way this country does business. We've seen them used in modern day warfare to target those believed to be dangerous or a threat to the security of the United States. There are mixed messages about how many civilians these drone attacks have killed. But let's not forget, drones are not just a weapon of war. And very soon they will be a permanent fixture in our landscape in this country, whether you live in Chicago, North Dakota, or New York City. Already, the FAA has been adopting new rules, expanding the use of small drones domestically. By the year 2015, drones will have access to U.S. airspace currently only reserved for piloted aircraft. And that could mean thousands and many uh, thousands of drones, and many of those will be used for surveillance purposes. Now, Douglas McDonald is the director of a special operations and the president of a company that trains people how to fly and operate drones in North Dakota. He recently told the Star Tribune newspaper that everyone should be fine with this. He said, if you're concerned about it, maybe there's a reason we should be flying over you, right? And he went on. But as soon as you lose your kid, get your car stolen, or have marijuana growing out at your lake place that's not yours, you'd probably want one of those flying overhead. So is he right? As long as we're behaving ourselves, shouldn't we not worry about what law enforcement is doing? Trevor Tim is an activist at the Electronic Frontier Foundation and joins us now. Trevor, this is a common argument. How do you respond to this? Right. It's just a different refrain on the classic argument. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. And, you know, this has been used countless times in the past to justify warrantless email surveillance or GPS location on your phone, cops getting it without a warrant. And it's all actually just a, a, a kind of a false use of, of an idea that we have about privacy. And, you know, I'm sure if we asked the head of this drone industry whether he would like a law enforcement drone following him around 24-7 or if we would like him to give up his password to his email address to, uh, to us so that we can read his emails or put cameras in his home, uh, he would be very uncomfortable with that. And that's the real problem with this argument, because he's using it to try to deflect criticism that these surveillance drones are going to in inflict on people's privacy, which they are, because there's actually no laws that are, uh, really cover this type of surveillance. And you know, it's not that people are arguing that, that drones shouldn't be used at all. That's, that's not at all the case. He's using kind of a straw man to hold it up. But uh, all we want are, are privacy safeguards to prevent Americans from being spied on uh, without a warrant or without court oversight. And we should mention, you know, uh, across the country, uh, universities here, American universities, uh, there's new majors at these universities being developed. Uh, the study of drones, of unmanned aerial vehicles. And it's said that, that, you know, some of these drone companies are desperately searching for drone pilots. What do you think that says in terms of uh, what the future looks like and drones? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of states and a lot of universities, as you say, uh, think that drones can be booming business. Uh, the FAA is currently looking for about five test sites throughout the country to test these domestic drones. And many states are vying to be uh, the recipients of this federal money that will come with this. Uh, and the same thing goes with, with drone pilots. Um, you know, the U.S. military, beyond domestic drones, uh, by next year will be training more drone pilots than actual pilots of manned aircraft. Uh, so they wow. think it's a booming business. That's why they actually... Uh, put this clause into uh, a bill in February, the FAA Modernization Act, which forced the FAA to start issuing these these authorizations. Um, you know, they freely admitted in one of their PowerPoint presentations that Congress took that uh, the clause word for word from what they what they asked them to do. Uh, you know, this industry is looking to sell this equipment now that the wars overseas are winding down, and where they're looking, unfortunately, is U.S. soil, and the American people are going to be the ones that are hurt by it. Uh, any evidence, Trevor, that precautions will be taken to protect innocent people's privacy, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, these uh, entire programs, tra training students, uh, training, you know, people whose jobs this will be in the future? Um, is, there, is that legislation being drafted here? Uh, yes, actually, it's 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 thankfully Congress is paying attention. Uh, you know, when the bill that I just mentioned that they passed in February, it was a clause kind of buried in it, and nobody really knew it was there until it was already passed. And the bill was was aimed at different goals. 
Um, but now, actually, Congress is hearing from their constituents. And in both the House and the Senate, there have been multiple bills drafted that would force law enforcement to get a warrant for this type of information. And it's important for citizens all over the country to keep calling their congressmen to tell them they're worried about this. And we can hopefully put an end to this potential problem before it actually gets out of control. Uh, because the FAA actually estimates that by the end of the decade, there may be as many as 30,000 drones flying in U.S. skies. And that's basically one for every town. So everybody could potentially be affected. So it's important to let Congress know uh, that you are against this and that you would want this type of bill to be passed. Yeah, that is a, a whole lot of drones uh, in our domestic airspace. Let me go back to something you said, Trevor. You said uh, nobody's saying for no drones to be used. I, I think it can be argued uh, that in the case of, uh, you know, searching for uh, a missing child, perhaps, or, or, you know, there are various examples. But um, talk a little bit about ways in which drones uh, now and in the future may be used for uh, the public good. Right. So this isn't like a fight against technology or new technology. It's a fight to make sure that people's uh, rights are respected when this new technology uh, becomes more prevalent. Uh, like you mentioned, searching for a missing child or, uh, you know, navigating a natural disaster area where people uh, can't get to. Or in the case of Japan, for example, they're trying to develop drones that could um, test radiation for nuclear reactors when people, um, it's too dangerous for people to enter. And, you know, there, there's even uses for journalism. You know, we don't want to restrict this technology so that nobody can use it. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that it's not used for government surveillance, um, which we you know, can already see uh, has really uh, exploded in the last decade uh, when it comes to new technologies. For example, your cell phone's GPS location information, police can get that without a warrant. Uh, the law, unfortunately, hasn't caught up with the technology, and that's what we need to make sure happens before these drones are flying uh, in basically every town. Let me ask you one final question, Trevor. Uh, as a journalist, this is difficult because we, uh, you know, at RT, try to, try to talk about this and try to tell our viewers about what's in the works. But this is not a sexy story, uh, especially when we talk about, as you mentioned, 30,000 drones by the end of the decade, a few hundred more drones uh, by 2015. Uh, people look ahead and they say, ah, that's all, you know, 1984 stuff and uh, Big Brother and fear mongering uh, about the government. Uh, talk a little bit about, just really briefly, uh, ways in which drones have already impacted our lives uh, and why we should be concerned. Well, we can already see that the U.S. military has developed drones as their number one weapon going forward. Um, but as they come back to the U.S., um, people will kind of have a, a greater sense about what these uh, machines can do uh, because, you know, they see them overseas, but they can't really feel their presence as they could when they're flying above their heads. And, uh, you know, our Freedom of Information Act lawsuit at EFF showed that actually um, a, a few dozen law enforcement agencies already have authorizations, and they're going to try to get more. And Homeland Security, at the same time, is giving them free money to buy these, uh, this technology. And we, it, there's no doubt that law enforcement are going to be using them. And it's important for people to know that sooner rather than later. Absol absolutely. As you say, uh, if nothing else, to, to let their lawmakers and let their local officials know that this is something they're concerned about. Trevor Tim, activist at the Electronic Fran Frontier Foundation, joining us from San Francisco, California. Thanks a lot.